Hey, this is Professor Perez again. In this video, we are going to reduce fractions. But unlike the previous video, we're going to have larger numbers to deal with with these fractions. So what I recommend you do is when a problem comes up, pause the video and try to work it out on your own, and then play the video to see if you got the correct answer. Now, let's get started. But before we do, we got to get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, ready to go? Yeah. Reducing fractions again. All right, Charlie, let's get started right there. 32 and 12. Well, notice 32 and 12 are both even numbers. That means they're both divisible by 2, right? And so we'll divide top and bottom by 2, and that'll give us 16 over 6. Now, 16 over 6, again, is even, so you can divide by 2. Some people find it easy to divide by 2. Let's do that. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And that is our answer. We can't reduce below 8 thirds because 8 and 3 have no common factor other than 1. So we say it's reduced to lowest form. Okay, now, notice we divided by 2 and then again divided by 2. That means we could initially divide it by 4. And if you did that, 32 divided by 4 is 8, 12 divided by 4 is 3, you'd get the answer in one step. So, depending on how well you know your times tables, that will determine how fast you can reduce. Because 32 divided by 4 is 8, because 8 times 4 is 32, and 12 divided by 4 is 3, because 3 times 4 is 12. So, sometimes the numbers pop in your head really quickly, but sometimes you just go in steps, so, which is fine. Let's do another problem here. 30 divided by 12. Both are even, so we can divide by 2, and that gives us 15 over 6. Now, 15 and 6 have a common factor of 3. And 15 divided by 3 is 5, 6 divided by 3 is 2, and that gives you 5 halves. Well, there's something called divisibility rules. So hopefully your teacher has talked about divisibility rules. Like, how do you know if a number is divisible by 3? Well, any number, take any number, and if you add up the digits in that number and get a sum, if that sum is divisible by 3, it means the number is divisible by 3. Like 15, for instance. 15 is a 1 and a 5. 1 plus 5 is 6, and 6 is divisible by 3. That means 15 is divisible by 3. So, keep that in mind. Let's move on here. Let's do 30 and 12. Now, notice we divided by a 2 and a 3. That means we could initially divide it by 6 and get the answer in one step. 30 divided by 6 is 5. 12 divided by 6 is 2. And there you go. Okay, how about 56 divided by 16? Now, don't get scared. Notice they're both even numbers, right? So we can divide by 2. 56 divided by 2 is 28. 16 divided by 2 is 8. It's a little tricky there. Again, we have even numbers, so let's divide by 2. 28 divided by 2 is 14. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Now, again, we have even numbers, so let's again divide by 2. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And so we get 7 halves, and that's our answer. Notice we divided by 2, and then again by 2, and then again by 2. Well, think about 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That means initially we could have divided by 8 and got the answer in one step. See, that's why it's important to know your times tables, because if you think about this, they are both divisible by 8, because 8 times 7 is 56, and 8 times 2 is 16. Which means 56 divided by 8 is 7, and 16 divided by 8 is 2, and then you get the answer in one step, right? Remember, you got to practice, though. 90 divided by 15. Notice, 90. 9 plus 0. Add up the digits, and you get 9. 9 is divisible by 3. And 15. 1 plus 5 is 6. 6 is divisible by 3. That means both those numbers are divisible by 3. That's the divisibility rule for 3. So, we divide by 3. We get 30 over 5. Now, this is a division problem, right? 30 divided by 5 is 6. If you know that, you just write the answer as 6. But if you didn't, you may think, hey, they're both divisible by 5, and that gives us 6 over 1, but 6 divided by 1 is 6. Notice we divided by 3 and then divided by 5. That means you could have done the problem in one step by dividing top and bottom by 15. So give that a try on your own. Let's try, start with 140 divided by 40. Well, you see those zeros and think, oh, they're both divisible by 10. So if we divide by 10, we get 14 over 4. Now, they're both even, which means we can divide by 2. 
and we get 7 over 2. That's our answer. Notice we divided by 10 and then divided by 2. That means we could have initially just divided by 20 and got the answer in one step. Here we have 33 divided by 121. These numbers are from your times tables. They're both divisible by 11. Because 33 divided by 11 is 3 because 3 times 11 is 33. 121 divided by 11 is 11 because 11 times 11 is 121. And there's your answer there. Let's go to another one here. Negative 72 over 32. Again, numbers from your times tables. Well, they're both even, so let's take it easy and divide by 2. 72 divided by 2 is 36. 32 divided by 2 is 16. Don't forget you have a negative sign out in front. Again, we have even numbers, so let's again divide by 2. That gives us 18 over 8. Don't forget about the negative sign. Again, we divide by 2, and we get 9 over 4. And there is our final answer, negative 9 fourths. Notice we divided by 2, and then again by 2, and then again by 2. So 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. You could have did this problem in one step by dividing top and bottom by 8. Let's try this one here, 64 and 24. Let's divide by 2. We get 32 over 12. Don't forget about the negative sign, Charlie. Again, they're even numbers, so let's divide by 2. We get 16 over 6, and again, it's negative. Again, they're even. Let's divide by 2. That gives us negative 8 over 3. And that is our final answer. Again, notice we divided by 2, and then again by 2, and then again by 2, and 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. That means you could have did the problem in one step by dividing by 8. All right, let's try this one. 108 divided by 72. Well, they're both even. So we can divide by 2. 108, half of 100 is 50, half of 8 is 4, so half of 108 is 54. Half of 72 is 36, because 36 plus 36 is 72. Now, 54 and 36 are both even, so we'll divide by 2, and that gives us 27 over 18. Now, 27 and 18 are both divisible by 9. They also are both divisible by 3, but 9 is a larger number, so let's use that. 27 divided by 9 is 3, and 18 divided by 9 is 2, and that's our final answer. Now, there's different ways you can get to the answer. You could have started by dividing by 9 in the very beginning, or you could have divided by 3. So there's several ways to get the answer, but no matter how you approach it, we will all get the same answer. Now here's the larger number, 750 over 1,800. Well, we can immediately divide by 10 and get rid of those zeros, right? So that becomes 75 over 180. Now, both those numbers are divisible by 3. Remember, the divisibility rule for 3, if you add up the digits in a number and that sum is divisible by 3, it means the number is divisible by 3. So with 75, 7 plus 5 is 12, and, and 12 is divisible by 3, so that means 75 is divisible by 3. With 180, you have a 1, 8, and a 0. When you add 1 plus 8 plus 0, you get 9, and 9 is divisible by 3, which means 180 is divisible by 3. 75 divided by 3. What is it, Charlie? 25. Nice recovery there, Charlie. That's right. It's 25. Now, how about 180 divided by 3, Charlie? 60. Very nice there, there. It is 60, all right. Both those numbers are divisible by 5 because one, the top number ends with a 5 and the bottom number ends with a 0, so we know it's divisible by 5. And so 25 divided by 5 is 5, and 60 divided by 5 is 12. And that is our final answer. Now here's 90 divided by 315. Now again, let's use our divisibility rule for 3. On the top, we have 90. 9 plus 0 is 9, and 9 is divisible by 3, which means 90 is divisible by 3. Now, our denominator is 315. You have a 3 plus 1 plus 5, and that gives you 9. And 9 is divisible by 3, so that means 315 has to be divisible by 3. So let's divide by 3. 90 divided by 3 is 30, and 300 divided by 3 is 100. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 
Therefore, 315 divided by 3 has to be 105. And now they both end up with a, well, one of them ends up with a 0 and the other one ends up with a 5. So those numbers are divisible by 5. 30 divided by 5 is 6. 105 is equal to 21, right? Now both those numbers are divisible by 3. Now let's divide by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 21 divided by 3 is 7. And so our final answer is 2 sevenths. Whew, that was a tough one. Anyway, let's take a break, and I hope to see you again soon.